the Holy Spirit resisted. As I was riding through a village, in which I was almost a stranger, I saw a number of young people entering a schoolhouse. The clergyman of the place was standing by the door. He beckoned me to stop. He told me he had appointed a meeting for inquiry and was surprised to find so many assembling. He wished me to go in and have some conversation with those who were there. I asked to be excused, as I was on my way to fulfil an engagement where I must be. He would not excuse me. I must stop, if it were only for five minutes, he said. He conducted me into a room where were fifteen young women. Say something to every one of them, he said. I did, though I was not in the room ten minutes. At the time, he was conversing with some young men in another apartment. As I passed from one to another in this rapid conversation, I came to a young lady about twenty-five years of age, whose countenance indicated great agitation of feeling. I said to her, Do you feel that you are a sinner unreconciled to God? Yes, I do. I am a lost sinner. Can you save yourself? None but Christ can save me. Why then don't you come to him? He is willing to save you. He loves to save sinners like you. Indeed, I do not know. My heart is hard and wicked, and I am afraid I never shall be saved. She burst into tears, which she had seemed anxious to suppress, and buried her face in her handkerchief. How long have you been in such deep trouble of mind? For three weeks, she said, sobbing aloud. Then, for three weeks, you have done nothing but resist the Holy Spirit. I left her and passed to the next individual. In a few minutes I left the room and went on my way. The next week I was riding in a carriage alone a few miles from the same village and I saw before me a young gentleman and a young lady in a carriage riding in an opposite direction and I was just meeting them. She appeared to be trying to induce him to stop and he did not seem to understand what she wanted. She finally took hold of the reins herself and stopped the horse and motioning to me, I reined up also, and we sat in our carriages, face to face and close together. That was true, that was true, sir, she said. What was true, said I, for I did not know who she was, though I recognised her face as one that I had seen somewhere. What you told me at the inquiry meeting that morning, that I had done nothing for three weeks but resist the Holy Spirit, that expression pierced my very heart. I did not believe it. I thought I was yielding to the Holy Spirit because I was anxious and had begun to seek the Lord seriously, and I thought you were most cruel to speak to me so. I did not believe you, but I could not get the idea out of my mind. It clung to me night and day. For three weeks you have done nothing but resist the Holy Spirit, you said. That expression opened my eyes and I could not let you pass us here without stopping to tell you how much I thank you for it. She said this very rapidly, her eyes swimming with tears, and her countenance beaming with joy. Her whole heart seemed to be embarked on what she was saying. By this time I fully recognised her, and recollected my former hurried interview with her. For a few minutes I conversed with her as we sat in our carriages, she hoped that God had given her a new heart. She was at peace, not only, but full of joy. Oh, I am happy, she said. I am so happy. You opened my eyes. You told me just the truth. I thought you were cruel. I wanted you to explain yourself, but you would not stop to hear me. As I reflected on what you said, I hated you with all my heart. But the words would come up. For three weeks you have done nothing but resist the Holy Spirit. It seems to me now that if you had said anything else, or made any explanation as I wanted you to, I should not have been led to the Saviour. I can never thank you enough for the words which showed me my very heart. I have not seen her since. I learned that a few weeks afterward she made a public profession of religion. Her pastor told me, that he esteemed her highly, 
as one of the most intelligent and accomplished of his flock. She belonged to a very excellent family. She possessed a discriminating mind. And did she err in thinking that for three weeks she had done nothing but resist the Holy Spirit? It seems to me that that is exactly what took place. This is a question that we all must ask ourselves when God challenges us, either by the word of his gospel or in some providential experience. Have we been resisting? Submission is the only way. Surrender to the Saviour and discover forgiveness. Rebellion brings the frown of heaven. It is sweet surrender to Jesus as the King of kings and Lord of lords that will bring every one who comes to God by him, finally, fully and forever, to salvation at last.